Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my complete guide to New World. I'll be covering everything from leveling and questing all the way through to the incredible 50 versus 50 wars and everything in between. The expeditions, endgame PvP, a little bit of crafting, you name it. By the end of the video, you can expect to know everything New World has to offer without delving too deep into specific subjects. The video is set up with chapters, so if you'd like to skip ahead to a specific point in the video, you can do so. Just click on the uh, timeline below. If after watching the video, there's anything you'd like to look further into, you can find everything you need over at newworldfans.com. And so what is New World? New World is an open world action combat MMO with a special focus on the combat style, which is designed as a physical hit detection system instead of the old school mouse or tab targeting system. The game has an engaging storyline where you find yourself shipwrecked on the island of Eternum, destined to an immortal life, fighting against corruption and competing with other rival explorers to stake your claim and secure your legacy. After finding yourself washed up on the shores, you are introduced to some of the characters of the island, who will provide you with quests which will help you familiarise yourself with the game and the turnum. Okay, so firstly, the combat, one of my favourite parts of the game to be honest. The combat in New World is described as action combat, which ultimately means you need to aim and target your attacks and skills. Your positioning and timing is crucial in New World in both PvE and PvP, but even more so in PvP. When you attack a player or mob, there are a variety of prompts that you will see. Floating damage numbers which will show all types of attacks, coloured indicators to show if an attack has been improved or reduced effectiveness against this type based on attack. You will see a text prompt to indicate what type of status effect has been applied, such as bleeds. A couple of great resources to see what monster types are weaker to what types of attacks are on worldforge.gg and newworldfans.com. I'll put the links in the description below. There are currently 11 weapon types in New World. The one-handed sword and shield, the rapier, the hatchet, the two-handed spear, the great axe, the warhammer. Then we have the two ranged weapons, the bow and the musket. And finally are three magic weapons, the Fire Staff, the Ice Gauntlet, and the Life Staff. You gain weapon mastery for each weapon that you use, which is like levels but for your weapons. The more you use that weapon, the more mastery you get. Each weapon has two skill trees and you can select up to three active skills and a range of passive abilities. There are a few websites out there where you can test builds and skill ideas, uh, but the one that I use is over on newworldfans.com. I'll post a link to the builder in the description below. And then we have our attribute points. Attribute points will directly affect the weapon that you choose, allowing you to increase damage or healing, let's say. You will also be able to gain additional attribute points from items such as food and armor. Speaking of armor, there are three different armor categories, light, medium and heavy. You can mix and match all pieces of gear in order to have your desired set. The physical armor helps mitigate all physical damage types such as melee, musket, bow, axe throws, uh, etc. And elemental resistance helps mitigate all magic damage types such as fire, void, lightning, etc. One of the most important mechanics in New World is your armor weight, which is called Equip Load. Your Equip Load will put you into one of three weight classes. Light, which allows a movement dodge roll, which helps you evade enemy attacks and adds a 20% damage or healing output bonus. Medium, which limits your dodge to a bit more of a quick hop instead of a dodge roll and grants a 10% damage bonus or healing output bonus which increases your crowd control buffs duration time by 10%. Heavy, which constrains your movement to a much more conservative slow sidestep, yet grants you with a block stability increase of 15%, and your crowd control debuffs last 20% longer. Personally, I love running heavy armor in the territory wars, which is the 50 versus 50 wars, 
and in large group PvP or open world smaller scale PvP, um, I really love running light armor. I, I love the mobility. And at the end of the day, it's it's a personal choice down to your particular playstyle. Combining your equip load and your selection of attributes to your particular playstyle can really give you a strong core build or even a great hybrid build. The gear system is based on different tiers and gear scores. Tier 2 is level 1 to 19, tier 3 is level 20 to 39, tier 4 level 40 to 59 and finally tier 5 is at level 60. Similar to most MMOs, the armor in New World is made up of a rarity system. Common being grey, uncommon being green, rare is blue, epic is purple, and legendary is gold. Each perk your armor has counts as a rarity point. Gems and attributes also count towards the rarity, which results in a total of 5 points. Gear score is also important to the overall strength of your build, the higher the gear score ultimately means the better stats and armor mitigations, which means that both your physical and elemental resistances scale with the gear score. The higher the score, the higher the mitigations. In addition to being able to level your character to level 60, the game has an elaborate and appealing life skills system, which you can also level up. These fall under three categories, gathering, refining, and crafting. The higher your level is in each of the respective categories, the higher the level of the resources you can collect, or the items that you can craft, and so on. You can also level up your weapons. This is a system dubbed as the Weapon Mastery. The more you level up your mastery, the more abilities you can skill into. Unlike most MMOs, New World allows you to play multiple classes with one character. The crafting system in New World is among one of my favourites I've experienced in recent years. While being at the core of New World, the crafting system is relatively easy to understand, but may take some time and energy to master. In short, the way the system works is you gather your materials, you then refine those materials, and finally you craft them into a particular item. A few of the things you can craft are potions, food, weapons, armor, jewels, tools, and items for your homes. There are a few ways to level up and craft efficiently, such as ensuring you have as much storage as possible. You can create potions and food to help you gather and craft faster. And you can of course use the New World Fans map to help you find the materials that you're looking to gather. Once we establish ourselves and move past the starting zone, equipped with weapons, knowledge and inspiration to explore this new world, Eternum has a vast amount of land for us to discover, including 13 settlements, 6 dungeons, different civilizations and hundreds of species of animals both on land and in the water. Upon reaching our first settlement we will find that there are a few things to do. Firstly we have the main story quests which are pretty mandatory if you wish to progress through the game. Through them you will gain your Azov staff which is a pretty important item to acquire for progression. Then there are side quests which are quests that you can find randomly as you travel around. Other quests you may find around the settlements are town quests. Uh, the majority of these quests happen when a company is upgrading the town. The idea behind the town quests is that you can help a company upgrade that particular town. So when they pay for an improvement, whether that's for a crafting station or a full upgrade, you can help complete these upgrades by doing the town quests. You can level faster if you make sure you pick up town quests in each of the towns you visit. Through the main quest line, you will eventually fall upon a mission that requires you to choose between the three factions that exist in New World, which is a feature that places you in sort of a team, immediately making you hostile to other players in other factions. Choosing the factions enables you to join a company and participate in PvP events. I have heard of people that have decided not to choose a faction, but that will limit you to what you can do in New World. First off, we have the Marauders, a ruthless military force bent on establishing a free nation where anyone with the strength and determination can stake a claim to do so. We have the Syndicate, who work in the shadows, dealing with secrets. Members of the Syndicate use their intellect to pursue forbidden knowledge. 
And finally, we have the Covenant, who are divine champions driven by conviction and their faith in the light of the spark. Once you make your choice, you are then able to take on faction quests, which are divided into PvE and PvP quests. The latter being the more challenging of the bunch due to the fact that, that you will be flagged for PvP, and thus can be hunted down by hostile players. From these missions you earn special tokens, which you can redeem for gear and weapons that are useful for PvP and PvE. Companies within factions are able to lay claim to territories by purchasing them and through these missions then they are able to maintain their influence over that territory, either repelling another faction's attempts to declare war or declaring war themselves. If you are looking to declare war you will need to do your PvP faction missions first, once successfully in conflict you can then declare war on that particular territory. The wars are the 50 versus 50 territory wars which is an all-out battle to defend that particular town, or to conquer that particular town. Once you've had a chance to explore Eternum and all the different settlements, you can start to think of purchasing your first house in a town that best suits you. You can purchase up to three homes, and each of them can have a different tier. Tier 1 through to Tier 4. The higher the tier means the more things that you can put inside your house. So you can decorate your house with purely cosmetic items such as shelves, pots and pans, uh, but you can also acquire items that will enhance your character by increasing things such as storage or giving you a particular bonus. So houses isn't something that you would potentially use at the start of the game, but it's definitely worth uh, thinking about as you progress through the world. As you quest through New World, you will come across dungeons, which are called expeditions in New World. Expeditions are a five-man instance dungeon run which will help you learn more about the lore of Eternum but also provide a great challenge for you and your party. There is also an awesome opportunity to get some good drops in these expeditions too. Once you reach level 50 you will be able to participate in invasions. Invasions are 50-man raids where waves of enemies will attack your settlement and ultimately it's your job to defend it. <clears throat> and that's it boys thank you so much if you've made it this far or you skip through and you've ended up here um i really appreciate you spending the time watching the video and hopefully you know this guy was intended for new players maybe you've got a new friend that's going to be playing the game um or you're a new player yourself it's, it's made for kind of top level stuff so i really hope you enjoyed that as you can see uh, uh hairs up now i've got cookies on the side it's been a long journey kind of putting this together um so yeah i hope you enjoyed it if you did Please feel free to subscribe, like, keep in touch, um, and hopefully, hopefully I'll get to meet you in a tournament. So enjoy New World, boys, and I'll see you soon.